Okay, so I showed you how to draw Lewis structures for a couple different diatomic molecules. Um, it's a little bit easier because they both have the same uh, number of valence electrons, and, it's, and they're small, so there's only two atoms. But of course, we're interested in a more general strategy so that we can draw uh, some things that are more complicated. Um, so, of course, we can use Lewis theory to discuss uh, molecules that are not diatomic. So I'm going to go over a generalized strategy here. So a general strategy is known as the Kelter strategy for um, drawing these Lewis structures. And I'm going to go over the rules and then I'm going to do an example alongside it so the rules will make a little bit more sense. Um, so the first thing we need to know is how many valence electrons are there for the whole molecule. So the first thing we do is get the number of valence electrons for the molecule. Um, and the next thing we need to figure out is basically how many are, are missing. So we need to know the number to make the atoms happy. Some people call it happy. Uh, basically, um, it's how many do we need to complete the outer shell to complete the octet. So, uh, complete the octet. Uh, once again, most of the time we're going to be dealing with an octet. There are some exceptions that I'll talk about in another video. Um, the next thing we need to do, step three, is we are going to look at um, the number of bonds that this molecule is going to have. So the difference uh, between steps one and step two and, and one divided by two is going to be the number of bonds. So the number of bonds is going to be equal to uh, step two minus step one divided by two. Um, this is kind of just to square up the octets of the molecules. Um, this is going to make a little more sense when we do something more complicated than a diatomic. But the next thing we have to do is figure out what's the central atom. So the central atom is the least electronegative atom. Um, so that's going to be the one that becomes the center. All the other atoms are going to be placed around it. Uh, the next thing we have to do is draw the skeletal structure. So basically what that means is we arrange the atoms, we put the bonds attaching them around the central atom, and then finally we are going to fill up the outside atoms with the dots or with the remaining electrons. Um, if there's some kind of error, you'll be able to see it right away because you'll be left with something that doesn't have a completed octet. Um, if there are leftovers, so leftover electrons go on the central atom. Um, so that might have sounded strange, so let's do an example to make it make a little more sense. So I left as an exercise in the last video for you guys to draw the Lewis structure of N2. So let's draw the structure of N2 using this Kelter strategy. Um, so we know nitrogen has five valence electrons, which means that N2 is going to have ten valence electrons. Um, so, so now we know that we have ten electrons to work with. Uh, we need to make each one of these nitrogens happy, which means that we need to have each nitrogen have a complete octet. So what that means is N2 should have, in theory, 8 times 2 electrons, which is 16. Um, so we need to create some bonds in order to complete these octets. So what we're going to do is 16 minus 10 divided by 2. That's 6 over 2, so we know we have 3. So we have a triple bond here. Okay, in step 4, um, because 
both of the atoms we're dealing with are the same and that there's only two, we know we're dealing with something linear here, so we don't have to worry about this. But we're, we're, I'm going to show other examples where um, it does matter. But for now, um, there is no central atom. So let's draw the skeletal structure. Once again, we know we have two nitrogens and that there's going to be a triple bond between them. And then next we have to do step six, which is we're going to fill up the outside atoms with dots. So we have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we have ten electrons total, just as we should. Um, each nitrogen has a completed octet, and this is the Lewis structure for N2 using the Kelter strategy.